Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Preview on a Mac to edit your photos and images. Now Preview comes with all Macs, um, it's a free piece of software and it's actually really powerful. Um, you may think um, on the outset that it doesn't really do very much but it's got lots of hidden features um, that can help you to edit images really effectively. Um, so by default, if you've got a JPEG image that's come from your camera or from the web or, or some other source, it will usually open in preview. So let's go ahead and open up an image. So this is a, a picture of a door, not very exciting, um, but I want to show you how you can use preview's tools um, to edit this image. Now, for some reason, Apple have hidden quite a lot of the good tools. Um, so this is the, the toolbar that you'll get by default but it's missing quite a few of the tools that you might want to use. So the first thing I would suggest doing is customising this toolbar. So if you right click in the toolbar, you can choose Customise Toolbar and you can actually pick some of the useful tools that you might want to use. So for instance, you might want to crop photos. Um, that's always quite a useful tool. So you just pick up the tool and drag it to the toolbar and it will be added for future use. Inspector is also quite a useful tool because that gives you information about your images um, so, such as exposure, what camera you used, when they were taken, um, what the dimensions are and the size and that kind of thing so that's very useful. Rotate again is something that's incredibly useful. Um, you may also want to scale your images, um, so this shows you uh, at what, what percentage of the full image size is being shown, so that's quite a useful tool. Um, and the final one that I would choose is move, text and select, because we're going to be using that a little bit later. So once you've customised your toolbar, just press done, and now you can see all these new tools that you've chosen are showing up. So now these tools are available for your use and they're really, really easy. So if I wanted to crop this image, um, all I'd need to do is to drag around the area that I wanted to select and press crop. And you can see now it's cropped the image to that area that I've selected. Um, you can also resize your image. You can see here that it's only being shown at 19% at the moment because this is quite a large image. If I wanted to change the size of the image, I would go to Tools um, and I would go to Adjust Size. And I can adjust the size in various ways. Um, so pixels, the percent of the original size, inches, centimetres, millimetres and points. I'm going to stick with pip pixels and I'm going to change the width to 500 pixels so that's a 20% reduction in the overall image size click OK so now this is showing the image at full size you can see in the scale box it's showing 100% um, so that is the, the full size of my image and if I wanted to rotate this image very simply just click rotate and round it goes so that's a quick and easy way to crop, resize and rotate your images, things that you probably want to do on an everyday basis. And it just saves you going into bigger image editors like um, Photoshop or GIMP. Um, there's no point in opening up a big piece of software that's slow to run if you just want to do those quick adjustments to your images. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. I'm just going to close that image now. Uh, now I wanted to show you how to adjust the colour of your image uh, because again this is quite a hidden feature in preview. Um, so open up an image that you want to adjust the colour on and if you go to tools you'll see here it says adjust colour. If you click that a little um, window will open up and it's, there's various sliders to adjust different settings so you could adjust the exposure of your image, um, you could adjust the contrast, um, and so on, um, saturation, temperature, tint, and that kind of thing. I think just for fun, I'm going to desaturate this a bit, which means taking some of the colour out of it. Um, and I'm going to up the contrast a bit to make it a bit more punchy. And I think I might just up the, the uh, sharpness a little bit as well. So when you're finished, you can just close that little box down. Um, 
Now what I was going to show you how to do is to add text and symbols to your images because again this is quite a, a useful feature but it's somewhat hidden in preview. To do it you simply need to click on annotate and you'll see a little um, selection of icons has arrived at the bottom of the screen here. This allows you to add symbols and text to your image. So for instance, I might want to add an arrow pointing at something of interest in the image. All you do is select the tool by clicking it and then you drag it across onto your image and hey presto. You can change the colour of it by clicking the colour uh, box and perhaps you want a purple arrow or oops, there's my dock popping up, or a red arrow. And you can change the width by clicking the line width um, and selecting from the various options. Or you could have a dotted one if you wanted. So a large dotted arrow and so on. So you can mess about with it. If you wanted to move the arrow, you can just pick it up and drag it, drag it around. And if you wanted to resize it or change the angle, um, if you click on one of these grey dots at the end, you can then twirl it around and change it to your heart's content. But I'm going to get rid of that because I don't particularly want an arrow on my picture. Another thing you could do is add a shape. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to circle something in your picture to bring to somebody's attention, you could um, put an oval. So perhaps I want to draw attention to this gatepost here. Just circle it with an oval and again you can change the colour. Um, so you could change it to blue or yellow or what have you and you can change the line thickness um, again to your heart's content. So that's quite useful if, if you want to um, point something out in a picture perhaps um, you want to you know you're critiquing somebody's photography or what have you or you just want to label something um, in a diagrammatic way that's the easy way to do that but I'm going to get rid of that as well because what I really want to do is add some text if you want to add text you click on this text button and I've actually just opened the the font panel as well which shows you the various options for your text um, if you want to add text you just drag a text panel onto your picture and type away. So I'm going to type Trinity College Dublin because that's where this picture was taken. And in the font panel you can make various selections so you can choose different different types of font, you could choose different colours, so you could I mean, that's, that's a little bit gaudy for my taste but you could choose whatever you wanted. Um, I'm going to go back to, uh, let's see, Futura, that's quite quite nice, you can change the size, um, you can play about with it as much as you want, um, but I think, I think I'm probably going to go for impact and fairly, fairly large. Um, you can also change the opacity, which means um, which governs how much of the background picture shows through. Um, so if I choose white again, um, actually let's do it from here. There we are. Um, I can drag this opacity slider, and you can see that varying amounts of the image show through. More of the image shows through as I lessen uh, the opacity there. So I can slide that up and down. And it's quite nice to have it a little bit opaque so that some of your image shows through. Um, and you can see if I move if I move this around the picture, you can see, uh, especially where there's something darker in the background, you can see that showing through quite clearly. Anyway, I'm just going to leave that there for now. Um, close that down and then of course you can save your image. What I would always recommend is saving it as so that you don't save it on top of the original. Um, so I'm simply going to save it as Trinity College, save it onto my desktop and it saved it as a JPEG image. Or it will do <coughs> when my computer stops being slow. There we are. So I can actually show the original. That's the original, quite bright image of Trinity College. And this is my um, 
adjustments so I've, I've got rid of some of the colour using the saturation tool and I've added some text on there telling you where it is so again this can all be done in preview which is a free tool which comes with your Mac very very useful uh, but a lot of these tools are a little bit hidden the last thing I wanted to show you was how to remove the background um, from a picture so I've got a nice portrait here of my dad um, let's just make that full screen there we are but imagine if I wanted to cut him out from the background so I don't want the sea and the sky in the background, I just want him. You can do that using the Instant Alpha tool which is a, um, quite an interesting tool. Um, it basically chops out loads of the background. It does it um, by, by um, recognising colours and chopping out similar colours. So you just simply hold and drag and anything that's red will be chopped out um, but you want to make sure that you don't chop out anything from the actual image so simply hold and drag until it gets near to the edge but not over the edge of what you want to keep there we are it's quite delicate I've made a bit of a mess of it there because you can see that I've got a bit of the hat and I want to keep the hat um, so you have to do it in stages to be quite careful and when you've selected it you just delete and carry on doing that this is going to be very rough and ready but it gives you the idea of what you need to do anyway uh, whoops chop 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 select that little bit under there chop that's a bit of the sky, so that can go, that can go. Oops, don't want to get all the hat. There we are. There we are. Okay, so this is, obviously, I'd spend more time on this if I was doing it properly. Um, and you, you can zoom in if you've missed little bits, so we've, we're missing some bits. Uh, at the top here. If I go back to the instant alpha again, this bit here is in need of a bit of there we are, that line there. That line there and so on. I mean you can tidy it, you can tidy it all up but you get the idea. Um, so that's basically how to get rid of a, a background um, and then of course you could copy this image and paste it on a different background so I could make it look like he's in the Bahamas um, rather than South Shields. So that's one way to get rid of a background. The other way to get rid of a background is to use the Smart Lasso tool uh, which is in the same place if you go to the select menu at the top. You select Smart Lasso and all you do is draw around the thing that you want to cut out from the background. So I'm going to cut out this rather nice swan from the water behind it. So I just need to draw around, try to make sure that the edge is underneath the red line. Again, I'm doing this really, really quickly, so it might be a bit of a mess, but it gives you an idea. Round I go, making sure I'm getting the edges. There we are. That's a bit of the swan's back, so I'll get that in it. Oops. And you just need to make sure that you finish where you started so that it's joined up. And hopefully, there we are, you can see that the swan is selected. Now it's a bit jaggedy round here because I've made a bit of a mess of it. Um, now if you wanted to cut out the background what you need to do is go to edit and invert selection so that the background is selected rather than the swan and then you just press delete and there it is the background's disappeared as I say it's a bit messy because I did it quickly but that gives you an idea of how to use that tool so anyway I hope that's been a helpful introduction to preview um, I hope it's helped you to realize that previews are really quick really useful tool um, for doing some image editing um, and of course it comes free with all Macs so it's probably sitting there on your desktop hardly ever being used um, so now you know how to make use of its uh, more helpful features thank you very much for listening if you want more tutorials do go to www.teachmetech.co.uk
Bye.